it's been ages since Boston College has done really well recruiting basketball in the state of Massachusetts. Well, BC just landed their second commitment in the state. And I'm going to tell you why I'm even more excited about this new commitment coming up on today's episode. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On BC. I am your host, AJ Black. Thank you all for listening. We got a lot to get into today, including basketball recruiting, baseball hiring a new manager, and some football stuff. Well, let's get into basketball right away. So, the class of 2024 landed their second commitment of this class with Boston College grabbing Luca Taves, a 6'1 point guard from Massachusetts. He plays at uh, a local school and part of the Middlesex Magic AAU uh, circuit. This is a massive get for Boston College. Now, ranking-wise and offer-wise, he hasn't had um, a ton of big offers, but you read the scouting reports on him. You read what some of the experts have said about Taves, and you get excited. Now, let's, let's get into what this kid is about. He's part, he's a part Japanese. Uh, his brother Kai played at UNC, uh, sh- uh, one of the UNC schools, uh, Wilmington, I think it is, and was very good there. And then it ended up playing in Japan. His dad, BT Taves, is the uh, head coach for a, I think it's a women's basketball team in Japan. Uh, his cousin is Jonathan Taves, who is a legendary uh, Chicago Blacks Hawks player. And so this kid's got, this kid has got, some uh, lineage here. And so you're getting a kid who, uh, you know, here's what some of the things that they said. I'm going to tell you what Brandon Jenkins says. Brandon Jenkins at 247. He controls the game at the point guard position with his change of pace, ball handling, and excellent floor vision. Taves plays a very unselfish and winning brand of basketball. Factor in his toughness, and he certainly is a point guard high major should take a chance on. Now, there you go. High, ch- they should take a chance on. Well, BC just jumped right in that and they landed him. Uh, so he, he, you look at what he does, and this is everything you want from a point guard. You're going into next year, you don't know where Jaden Zachary is going to be. He remember, he played two post uh graduate years at a community call or, or a Juco college before he came to Boston College. He may come back. I mean, he has the eligibility, I believe, to do it. But there may be a potential that you're losing your point guard next year if Zachary plays it. You also are going to potentially lose Mason Madsen, who has one more year left, but you don't know what that's going to look like. And then there's also the transfer portal. So you're getting a floor general. You're getting a guy that can control the pace of the game. That is an excellent get. And the fact that you did it in your own backyard shows where this program has got has, has has got has come. This is the second commitment for Boston College under Earl Grant in the state of Massachusetts. And both have come in this class. Remember last year and the year before, Grant went all over the country finding other guys, but they didn't get anyone, he didn't land anyone specifically from the state of Massachusetts. So BC is starting to make inroads in some of these AA like Middlesex Magic, you know, they're they're looking at guys through that AAU program. For a program that had burned a lot of bridges, who hadn't done a great job of local recruiting, it's good to see this. And it's not just Earl Grant. You have to give credit to previous regimes. Scott Spinelli, who was with Jim Christian, was probably the pioneer of fixing a lot of this. So a lot of the credit should go to him that BC's in the place that they're going right now. So now you're in Massachusetts. You've got two guys. You've got Luca Taves. You also have uh, Nick Petronio, who is, I believe, also part of Middlesex Magic, but he didn't play at all last year because he blew his knee out. So you have two guys. And, and again, Massachusetts does pro, you know, produce a lot of high talent, high-level talent. A lot of times those guys aren't going to come here. But, you know, 
for every one that goes someplace else, it goes to Kentucky or something like that. You do get the DeMar Langfords. DeMar Langford was a four star. Dennis Clifford was a four star. You know, I think just continuing to work the local, you know, relationships is going to be a big thing for BC and getting a guy like Taves. I'm excited about this. You know, he doesn't fit a lot of what I thought Earl Grant was doing with his guard position. You know, you look at the Fred Payne's and the Chaz Kelly's and DJ hands, and you're looking at guards that are usually like six, three, and he's a little bit more undersized, but that's okay. If he is the, if he's the tenacious type of player that you think fits your system and he is available, you go out there and you get him every day, right? Because he's showing through his play that he deserves to be at Boston college at, at a high level school, because if he blows up, you know, it is good to get in now before, you know, all those other programs jump in because, you know, now that Earl Grant has him locked in, he's not really locked in. It's a verbal commitment, but now that he has him committed, it'll be harder for other schools to poach him. So I think this is a good get. And, you know, he, he's, he's coming off a scorching hot summer. The Middlesex magic just won the under armor uh, circuit of AAU teams. You know, he, and he was the, I believe the MVP of the team. Uh, so, that I think kind of wraps up what he can do. Now, the bigger question remains, will BC go for a third uh, recruit for this class? I still have a hard time reading who, you know, because of COVID years and stuff and, and the transfer portal. And sometimes people know ahead of time, if a player is going to transfer, I have a hard time gauging how many recruits are going to be coming next year, because I believe you'll, I think you're going to lose Quentin post. He's definitely gone. You lose. Um, you're probably going to, I think you would probably lose Jaden Zachary, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, and Mason Madsen. So you may have three, but again, that's going to be, you'll have to wait and kind of read the tea leaves. And I'm going to continue to talk to that. I'll try to get, you know, more in touch with the staff to, to find out more details um, because, you know, there's other guys out there. You know, if you're looking at um, the Middlesex magic, if you wanted to get a wing, there was Ryan Mila, who is from, I think from Natick, uh, and he's a six, five forward uh, who also had a really strong summer as well. And I know he has a bunch of Ivy league offers, but he might be a guy that blows up too. So there's potential out there. That's what I want to get into. There's potential. We'll have to wait and see, you know, <clears throat> there's not a, I did a big board for the Eagle and for Eagle insider. And most of my board of guys that have been offered are guards. I saw a lot of point guards and a lot of shooting guards. BC already has two guards now. So I think they're done there. It'll be interesting to see if they continue to push uh, for any forwards, you know, wings or, or, or centers. I don't think they'll go for centers because I think they're good with Almighty and Hastings uh, going into next season. But that, that kind of wraps up our conversation. Now, in a moment, I want to get into baseball, who also had a big week with a new hire. And I think I can't wait to talk about that. Now, let's get into... FanDuel. FanDuel is they're they're the best. I mean, if you're looking to get into um you know sports betting, you got to take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first betting amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. Now me, I have been if you are like me, if you're a Boston fan, you've been betting and you've been on FanDuel. you should be hammering the Red Sox like I have. And I've been, I've been hitting and hitting and hitting. It's been a good run. And the, and I've been doing it all on FanDuel. Now, the best part about FanDuel is that it's safe. It's super easy to use and you get paid instantly. You get a, You, you go in there, you, you make a big bet. You say, okay, I'm going to bet that Justin Turner is going to hit a home run. You win. You're like, okay, I want that money so I can go out to dinner. Boom. It's, it's instantly withdrawn. It'll be in your account shortly. That does, It doesn't get better than that. That's what makes FanDuel so good. And there's no better place to bet on Major, Major League Baseball than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. This is Locked On Boston College. I am your host, A.J. Black. 
And I want to get into our next discussion, which is talking about baseball. Yeah. America's pastime. BC is coming off their most historic season in, I would say, in in school history. Uh, You know, they've made the Super Regionals, but coming off of a year where they were just bad. To rebound and get to the regionals, to win so many games against ranked opponents, to to set your your tie your school record in terms of team wins, it was such an emotional and ex, um, positive momentum. And then all of that felt like it, it was like a balloon letting go of air as Mike Gambino left weeks after the season ended to go to Penn State, which, as I said on a couple of week uh, episodes last week. It's different for football when it's a big program, but Penn State baseball stinks. And and Big Ten baseball, for the most part, stinks. So to lose your cherished alumni head coach to a program that stinks in a conference that stinks was was a bit of a hard pill to swallow. It was not easy for any BC fan to say, okay, this is all right. It, it, It stung and it really let the air out of, out of the balloon. But as quickly as that air was released, Blake James and the Boston College Athletics took a helium tank and just jacked it into that balloon and doubled the size of that balloon with the hiring of Todd Interdonato, the head coach of Wofford of the Wofford Terriers. Why is this exciting? Because Interdonato has won quite a few games over the last few years. You know, he has put together a stellar resume with the Terriers. In just the last two seasons, he won 82 games. If you want to add in 2021, he won 36 games that year. They finished first in the South South Conference every single year then. And so his team has won 30 games or more Every single year, except for the COVID year and 2017, when they won 28 games, this guy is a winner and he did it at a program that wasn't easy to win at. And I, I, this is so big for BC. I don't want to, I don't want to poo poo Mike Gambino because I know he meant a lot to the program, but for me, as someone, as just an outsider who, you know, follows the team, talks about it. This to me seems like an upgrade. You got a coach from a lower conference that is a proven winter winner and has done it year after year. And you brought him in. You got him before, you know, other t- other programs were able to do it because, you know, a coach that, that coaches, you know, they're, they're in the Wofford's in the Carolinas, right? Other programs that are around there, whether it's like a, a you know, I don't know who, what teams are struggling in baseball in the South, but because like, I know Wake Forest is good, you know, Georgia Tech maybe. Like Georgia Tech maybe has a bad year or something like that. They're going to look at an Interdonado and, and they're going to try to grab him. And so I love this hire. This is such a not BC hire. And it's been a couple now that like when they were announced, I was like, this is good. This is one. And I know it hasn't happened yet, but the Jeff Halfley hire when he happened, like just throw away the results for now. Like, remember when he, that that GIF came out on Twitter of the smoke coming out, and you heard about it? This is that that level of excitement, but for baseball, okay? Except this guy, Interdonado, has won. He has a he has a proven track record, and I I loved his press conference. I loved what he had to say about where he thinks BC can go from here. He, he is a guy that, you know, I think gets it already. You know, he said it comes down to three things that we believe we can have success and sustainability. He says it's the institution, the conference in the city. And when you look at from that perspective, these three factors, you just can't do better than this institution, this conference in this city. So he is, all in. And he talked about how everyone in, around him was telling him it's a no brainer to go to Boston college. And that this program has a unlimited ceiling in terms of where they can go. That, that is exciting right there. Right. 
and he wrapped it all in with his talk of family, which I love hearing about when a coach talks about that, because that's so important. That's what BC's about, right? You know, whether they, you know, you want to see them win, but having them also be good people too, I think is important. You want to see them win and be good people, but you don't want scumbags that lose all the time and make you embarrassed to be a fan is, is what I'm getting at. But you get good guys like this who have the stamp of approval of the Frady's family. You have this guy who already has the locker room on his side. I mean, he talked about it in his, his uh, uh, introductory press conference, Brent, Vince Zimini, you know, he, he went to talk to him. He called all the guys to tell him, you know, try to make sure they don't enter the transfer portal. And he said to him, like, you know, the, you know, I want you guys to be here, blah, 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 blah. And Simini says, Simini had probably the quote of this whole press conference and he wasn't there, but he said it, Todd, I speak for everybody. We'd rather die than go play for another program that, I mean, if you're a BC fan to hear that, that's going to be exciting too. Right. So you're getting some real, really good excitement about this new head coach. And there's no assistance yet. That's going to be something important to watch as BC, you know, they got Greg Sullivan staying on. He's a longtime assistant coach, but they need a hitting coach and they need a pitching coach. And so, um, yeah, uh, Interestinato says he's been interviewing 30 to 40 guys, but he wants guys that fit what they're doing here. I think this is a home run for BC. As I said, I liked Mike Gambino. I think he was a good fit for BC, but I think you saw the limits of what he could do. And I think Interestinato has a higher ceiling. And for fans that want to see BC be successful, that's the key right there. In our final segment, we're going to talk a little bit about the transfer portal and recruiting. As I want to talk a little bit about the 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 mess that's going on with Northwestern, you want to hear my thoughts on that. This is Locked On BC AJ Black. Thank you all for listening. If you like my show, I want to tell you you need to check out Locked On ACC with Candace Cooper. As we're getting closer to the season, Candace is awesome, and she's uh, she's with Kenton Gibbs now, who who co-hosts with her, and they talk everything ACC. It's a it's. It's a perfect compliment to Locked On BC to go check that show out. And she has some good takes on BC, so go check her out. It's, it's, it's good stuff. Now, BC uh, football recruiting is in a dead period, and not like a they stink and no one wants to recruit, no one wants to come here dead period. It says the staff can't do much because it's a dead period. So now you have you're going to see some more names as as BC's big board is basically toast like you got the guys some of the guys you wanted you lost some but most of them already made their decisions so there's now other names to look at and i heard a lot of folks going oh it's going to be plan b and plan b this and plan b that yeah maybe that's how you want to frame it if you want to frame it that way that's fine but i think there's some names that are coming up that aren't plan b's that are guys that are just falling in their lap and I think this is going to be exciting. So if you have been following along in the news, if you follow on Twitter or anything, you know about the, the disaster that's going on in Northwestern right now. Pat Fitzgerald was fired after this huge hazing thing. Uh, Jim Foster, their baseball coach, also got fired, former BC coach. Um, it's a mess. The Wildcats athletics is about to get rocked badly. They just named an interim head coach, and it was a defensive coordinator that just joined the staff. Things are bad there. And so college sports, you guys know it too. When, when recruiting happens, coaches are like piranhas with this stuff. And so you knew when you saw that that happened, that there were going to be coaches circling that, that, that commitment list to see who they could figure out to try to poach from Northwestern and Boston college. They have to play the game. It's not nice, but that's what they have to do. And to credit to the staff, they're doing it. So the first name that you're going to want to know about is this big man on our screen. If you're on Twi if you're on YouTube right now, you see exactly who I'm talking about. That's Julius Tate. He is a uh, offensive lineman who's who who was committed to Northwestern, and he's six three, three hundred ten pounds. He just started playing football uh, or offensive line last year, but he has a key uh, ingredient to him that I love which is that he's a shot putter and a, I think it's discus. Um, yeah. Discus and shot putter. He's a big, uh, you know, fat track and field guy. You love to see that. There's something about it that just makes good offensive linemen. 
Uh, and so this, they offered BC offered him after he decommitted. I talked to him. I have a full interview up on Eagle Insider, but also he's coming to BC. Uh, I think next week for an official visit. So you have a guy that's rated higher than many of the guys I saw people complaining about uh, that BC lost on. And I get it. I'm not saying that it's, it's wrong to complain about guys. BC lost, lost, uh, you know, trying to recruit, but this guy's right up there with them. If you look at their two, four, seven ratings, he's higher than Mason Wade. He's right up there with uh Kyle tuner. This is the kind of guy you want to get. And he's, he fell right into your lap. So BC could close this, you know, he, he's going to visit. I wouldn't be surprised if he commits. And then you get your second offensive line, off, offensive lineman. But that's not it. B- BC has also offered uh, Idris Cotton, who I believe, if I look at it, is a um, – he's still committed to the team, but he is – he's also a guard. Also rated pretty highly. He's a 86, but higher than a lot of the guys BC was looking at. He's still committed, but BC's looking at him. There's also Peyton Stewart, who is an – a tackle who I think is rated higher than all of them. So you got all these guys, you have names now that you can look at to rebuild your, uh, like three guys that are at Northwestern or were at Peyton Stewart and Tate are both decommits cotton still there. You could poach some of these guys. And then all of a sudden, boom, you have offensive linemen, many of them with big offers that are now in rated higher than some of the guys that you had on your first big board. This is where you could kind of hit that home run. I think that's exciting to watch for. And I'm going to throw this out there as a teaser. And I'm I'm digging in more to this. So those three guys I know, Peyton Stewart, I, he hasn't been offered yet, but I know that they're looking at him. I know Cotton has been offered and Tate has been offered. The name I want to watch for is also an issue BC. A lot of BC fans were upset about, which is the lack of quarterback. Northwestern has a quarterback. Brendan Zerberg. Zerbrug, Zerbrug, I'm going to get his right. Brendan Zerbrug from Alliance, Ohio, 6'4", 185, rated 85. He is, uh, I believe, close to what um, Henry Hasselbeck is in ratings. He committed to Northwestern, and then after he flipped from Syracuse, after Syracuse kind of looked like it kind of pushed him out uh, to get another um, quarterback that they wanted. I'm just going to throw this out there as a teaser I don't, I haven't, I'm going to dive in and I'll have more details on Eagle Insider when I find out if they are, but the entire BC staff or a lot of BC staff, local committed recruits, recruiting coordinators, they're all falling on him. He hasn't been offered yet. So I'm wondering if there's going to be an offer coming out to Brendan Zerberg. So that could be something to watch for. And if you want to get all those details, go over to Eagle Insider. Um, And if you have been a subscriber before and you, quit for some reason maybe you just were done talking about bc and now you're like getting back into it on i uh so on the thursday on the 20th you're gonna get an email if you have been a subscriber that you can sign up for 50 percent off and we'll have some special deals throughout the summer if you haven't been but sign up it's so cheap and it's we i have been pumping out content like crazy so go over there you'll get all the details on all these guys from northwestern and everything else i talked to the staff i talked to the kids you'll get everything So hopefully you come and sign up for that. Now, because I was away for the last week, I will be doing episodes. This is coming out on Tuesday. I'm going to do one tomorrow and I'll do one on Thursday. So you're going to get three episodes, bang, bang, bang at the end of this week. So hopefully if you've been missing our show, you're going to get chock full of Locked On BC to end this week. As we get closer to August, when August starts, I go back to five days a week. I'm going to be at camp for a whole bunch of it. Going to be lots and lots to talk about here, folks. So hopefully you join us. Thank you all for following. Follow me on Twitter at AJBlack247. And you can check me out on threads too. I'm on there. I don't I don't know what that site is. I can't figure it out. Like I get it, but it's just a pain in the neck. But if you want to follow me there, I'm there. Um, and follow me uh, you know, on all the other socials. We'll see you all again tomorrow. Thank you all again. We'll see you. Cheers. <laughs>